Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. Today we're going to have a video dedicated to the identity of the mysterious hidden one mentioned in the Siege of Paris DLC of Assassin's Creed Valhalla thanks to a now confirmed theory about his identity by Redditors Bull0011 and Floric345. In the video we're also going to add some additional information about the story of this character thanks to a comment by the lead quest designer of the DLC coming from an upcoming interview that we are still to release, before moving on to our attempt to create a full profile of this mysterious character based on everything that we know so far. Finally we're also going to share a small commentary about how this content was delivered to the fans and how, even with the recent and pretty interesting findings, it still leaves a slightly sour taste, all things considered. So without further ado, let's dive right in and have a look at the story of the only hidden one left in Francia. A few days ago the Russian account and member of the Mentors Guild Yubi News published an interview with two developers of the Siege of Paris DLC of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, namely content director Paul Fu and narrative director Joel Genis, addressing some of the main topics of the DLC, and of course you can find it in the description both in its original Russian version and in its English one. In the interview, the team at Yubi News asked the reason why the Hidden Ones aren't part of the DLC's story, while their presence in Francia is actually confirmed through the letter that can be found at the end of the questline, and the answer by the narrative director was that the Hidden Ones left Francia hundreds of years before the events of the DLC, but there was a single bloodline left in the region, carrying the torch for them. Apparently the devs hinted that the only hidden one left in Francia was a historical character who remains in the shadows and wanted him to be a mystery for the community to solve. Now this was pretty interesting in itself because it added an element of mystery to the hidden one's quest in the DLC and it was actually the lead that helped reddit users Bull0011 and Floric345 understand that that was a hint towards understanding who was the author of the letter found in the Lutetia Bureau in the DLC that was signed as AC. So their research led them to indeed find a historical character that lived during the Siege of Paris events and whose initials were A and C, and that character, in their theory which has since been confirmed, is Abocernus. Now Abo Cernus, or Abo of Saint-Germain, keep that in mind as it will be useful later, was a monk of the Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés in Paris, who was actually alive during the Siege of Paris of 885 and 886 AD, and apparently was the only eyewitness who wrote a description of it, called the Bellis Parisiaque Urbis, which means about the wars of the city of Paris. Now this, as we mentioned earlier, was just a theory at first, but it was supported by evidence. Abo was a monk at the Abbey of Saint-Germain and said Abbey can actually be found in-game within the DLC, although it is in ruins. This Abbey is actually at the center of a world event called the Ghost of Saint-Germain, in which Eivor finds a few villagers looking at the ruins of the Saint-Germain Abbey near Paris and apparently they seem to be seeing a ghost or a shadow on the roof of the abbey. Upon inspecting the church in ruins, Eivor can find a few documents, one of which is a monastic manuscript where the writer, called Brother Bruno, mentions how several vikings have tried to enter the abbey and pillage its treasures, but a series of events cause their death every single time, and the author of the manuscript attributes them to the work of Saint Germain himself. In one case it was a quote unquote seething madness that took hold of an invader, in another case a viking fell off the spire of the church, another one died while looking for Saint Germain's grave, a fourth one fell off the roof of the abbey as well, another one reached Germain's tomb and opened it but died right after because a stone from the grave hit his chest. Well you get the idea, and after all these failed attempts, apparently the vikings stopped trying to pillage the abbey, but it was then the brother Bruno saw a cloaked figure that he believed to be that of Saint Germain himself who was watching the vikings flee from the church's roof. 
Now, in the theory by Boole and Florek, the idea was that the ghost of Saint Germain, the cloaked figure seen by brother Bruno and the shadow that the villagers had seen on the roof of the church were one and the same. A monk that did care about the Saint Germain Abbey, who also looked like and behaved like a hidden one. And all of that converged in the figure of Abo Cernus, our AC from the letter in the Hidden Ones Bureau in Paris, but the evidence didn't stop there. Actually, going to the top of the spire mentioned in the documents allows Eivor to find the dead body of a soldier, a plate with some silver inside of it and especially a new document, which contains some order to a captain, presumably the dead soldier that we have in front of us. These orders actually say that the spies controlled by the writer of the document have tracked the captain's attacker to the Abbey of Saint Germain. As the letter goes, it seems like this captain had actually been attacked by an unknown assailant who also killed three separate watches that were under the captain's orders, and thus actually interrupted some kind of excavations that the captain himself had been working on. The author of the orders asked the captain very directly to take care of his assailant and to not report until he did, but apparently the captain too was killed by this unknown assailant, which we can of course surmise to be our Abo Cernus hidden one. The final kicker to the theory was added by Mentor Six Keys, who actually mentioned that the database entry dedicated to Francia does mention Abo of Cernus as the historical character who described the events of the Siege of Paris in 885 AD, but also states that quote unquote, nothing about that tricky little Benedictine monk was straightforward, possibly another hint at Abo being a very curious lad with a secret identity. So the theory about Abo Cernus gained some traction in the following hours, and eventually was hinted at or rather almost confirmed by associate game director Antoine Henry, who included the Reddit thread about Abo Cernus amidst the mysteries of the Siege of Paris DLC solved or interpreted by the community. There was still a little halo of uncertainty about this though, as Antoine did not directly confirm the theory, but soon after that, the Assassin's Creed official account formally did, so we now know for sure that the hidden one that Eivor almost met, but missed, was indeed Abo Cernus, but again the whole theory did not stop there. The letter was signed by I.M., which according to fan page La Cripta degli Assassini and some of their admins are also mentors, I.M. are the initials for Isidor Mercator, the supposed leader of the Bellator's Day cult which resembles, but is not part of, the Order of the Ancients slash Templar Order and that acts as Eivor's enemy within the DLC. So it does seem that Isidore Mercator was keeping tabs on the Hidden Ones and Abo Cernus in particular, so much so that, according to Boole, the mention of the captain's duty to the excavations is actually related to the letters found in the excavation sites located over the Hidden Ones Roman ruins, where another letter can be found, again addressed at the captain, where someone called Merriwig ordered him to search for the contents of the Roman ruins located at Champlieu, Jesus and Diodorum, which is exactly where the Hidden Ones ruins are located. So basically what we're seeing here is that at some point the Bellator's Day and Isidor Mercator specifically were on the search for the last hidden one in Francia, to the point where some of the guards were even excavating the ancient Roman ruins of the Hidden Ones buildings. But that hunt was stopped by Abo Cernus himself when he killed Isidor's captain on the spire of the church of Saint Germain. That was it for the super interesting theory about Abo Cernus and kudos to Bull and Florek for coming up with it and to all the other community members who participated in it, but we can add a tiny bit of our own as well, which is actually coming from our own interview with creative director Joel Janis, content director Paul Fu and lead quest designer Christopher Nonis, which, let's tease it here, is going to come very soon on our channel. Now, in our interview, we actually collected some questions by the members of the Mentors Guild and added some of our own, and a bit of the interview connected to the topic at hand here actually comes from Mentor Assassinus, who asked one of the burning questions that many fans asked after the Siege of Paris DLC released. Why and how is Charlemagne's sword in an abandoned assassin bureau sealed since the 4th or 5th century? 
And to that question Christopher Nonis answered, though the hidden ones left in force before the time of Charlemagne, there could well have been a hidden one presence still in Francia that had access to the bureau. If the sword made its way to the bureau after Charlemagne's death, which it must have, perhaps a hidden one had something to do with that. Smile emoji. Soon enough we're going to share our full interview, so keep an eye on the channel of course, but what is interesting here is that the lead quest designer of the DLC did provide an answer about how the Joyeuse sword ended up in the Roman Bureau in Paris, and the reason for that is apparently that a hidden one that had access to the Bureau, which we now know as Abo Cernus, or alternatively someone from his bloodline, was able to steal or in general obtain it and then store it in the inner and final room of the Bureau. So yeah, through another nod by a developer, we can add this little piece of the puzzle to the story of Abo Cernus within the Assassin's Creed lore, and with that we can try and trace a proper profile of the character and the events surrounding him. Abbo Cernus was a monk and a poet of the Abbey of Saint-Germain-des-Prés near Paris who lived towards the end of the 9th century AD and was part of the one and only bloodline of hidden ones that stayed in Francia after the Brotherhood left the region in the early part of the 5th century following the death of the Roman Emperor Honorius and following the suggestion by the leader known as Magister Vitus to regroup in the Cologne Bureau in Germany. It looks like Abo lived a double life focusing both on his duties as monk at the abbey and on his duties as hidden one and protector of the ancient ruins tied to the Brotherhood and of course the Lutetia Bureau, which as Bull noted isn't even that far from the Saint Germain Abbey. It's possibly in his early years as a hidden one that he was able to somehow steal or in general obtain the Joyeuse, the famous sword that had belonged to Charlemagne, who, as hinted at in Valhalla's main game, was the leader of the Order of the Ancients during his time, so this was pretty much the sword that had belonged to the sworn enemy of the Brotherhood that Abo belonged to, and which was likely in possession of his great grandson Charles the Fat. So for some unknown reasons, Abo decided to hide the sword, possibly because of its importance, within a bureau whose door only he knew how to open. As for what concerns his work at the Saint Germain church, Abbo tried to protect it from several Viking invaders, who still managed to destroy parts of it, but apparently were not able to put their hands on the relics of the saint, as Abbo assassinated them all, one way or another. At the same time though, the leader of the Bellatores Dei, Isidore Mercator, did find out about the existence of the Hidden Ones and especially the ruins of their buildings from the ancient Roman era, so they ordered a series of excavations to find a way inside of them, but pretty much at each of these locations, the foot soldiers of the Bellatores Dei were assassinated by Abo, as we can see in the Paris Bureau and as we learn from the letter written by the leader of the cult. This led Isidore Mercator to put the blame on the captain who was responsible for set guards and to order him to chase Abo and get rid of him, but alas, at the Abbey of Saint Germain, on his own turf, our hidden one prevailed again, keeping the Bellatores Day at bay, at least for that time. Abbo also kept a close eye on the events of the Siege of Paris, and we know that because historically he was the only eyewitness to write an account about it, but also because he likely kept an eye on Eivor, and I guess he approved of her if he allowed her to go around the Hidden One's ruins and the Bureau itself, and also allowed her to leave with Charlemagne's sword while even writing jokes in his final letter. So that's more or less everything we can put together about our hidden, hidden one. But there's also the other side of the coin here, a negative one in my opinion, and it boils down to one question. Did it really have to be this way? Was it always the plan to have some kind of mystery surrounding Abbot Cernus in the DLC, and was it always planned to be carried out this way? Because as it stands right now in game, it wasn't really clear that there was a mystery surrounding this character, let alone a path to understand who they were. And to be honest, signing a letter as AC absolutely misdirected most members of the community, especially considering that the letter was repurposing the Assassin's Creed maxim we work in the dark to serve the light. In this case, instead, it had to be an external tip-off by one of the developers rather than the in-game content to show that there was something more to look for and that didn't feel nice. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for devs or even main accounts releasing hints when the community is stuck while trying to find the next step of something that they are discovering, but it's a different situation when devs, instead of the game, have to tell the community that there even is a story or a mystery situation to look for. Again, I can only imagine how tough game design can be, and how the design of trails and mysteries can be even tougher, as you have to anticipate how the community will behave, imagine where and if they're going to be stuck, devise hints as contingency plans, and all that. So of course hiccups can happen in such a tough process, and we have seen this in the recent Saint Denis mystery for example, which had a rocky path at times, and forced the devs to produce 3 hints for the community to get to its end. In this case though, the hint by the devs was there to start the search, and that didn't feel right, and like I said, there weren't almost any mentions that could even tie this new hidden one to the historical character of Abochernus, apart maybe from the in-game references to a hooded character being spotted at the Abbey of Saint-Germain. Moreover, this answer to who the mysterious AC is can also bring some narrative issues, as the same Abo Cernus who repelled all the Vikings that attacked the same German Abbey was apparently okay with another Viking entering and pillaging all the Hidden One's ruins and even getting for herself the Sword of Charlemagne that Abo, I would imagine, worked hard to obtain and that he treasured so much that he hid it within the most important Hidden One's ruins of the region. And lastly, there's one of the most asked questions that is still lingering. If there was a plan to make Eivor and the player hear and read about a new hidden one, why not show him? And now that we know about Abo Cernus, it gets even stronger. Why, if there was even a backstory about this assassin, who was also a historical character, who was even active at the same time as Eivor was roaming Francia, why not show him? Of course, the issue doesn't necessarily lie within the devs themselves. I wouldn't be surprised if the scope of this DLC 2, like the Wrath of the Druids 1, was reduced during production, forcing the devs to cut some of the planned elements of the DLC. But still, from the outside, even if there is an interesting story behind this, it still leaves a sour taste, because this is presumably a side story for hardcore fans that is all written through documents that not everyone is going to find or even connect, and eventually doesn't seem to bring a full payoff to the same hardcore fans that this story seems to be designed for. It brings a weapon, it brings a backstory, but alas, the assassin was truly AC, as in absent certainly. And that was it for today's video. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy getting to know more about our hidden hidden one? Or would you have liked to see and interact with him a bit more? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.